Hello and welcome to our next tutorial on GitHub Access Plus UI Path Integration. In this tutorial, we'll explore the continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment of UI Path based project. Well, CI CD is not a new term and now it is being adopted widely across all the organization with a certain level of automation. The goal here today is to see how we should be able to automate the delivery of our automation project to deliver faster and with the high quality. There are several tools available in the market which perform the similar tasks such as Jenkins, Azure Pipeline, which provide the similar functionality. We have already covered CI CD pipelines using Jenkins. You can look at our blog for more deta details around the same. We have also covered CI CD using Azure pipelines that is also available on our YouTube channel. So in this tutorial, we'll use the GitHub, GitHub Action, UiPath Orchestrator, to set up a complete CI CD pipeline. First, we'll cover some important terminologies of GitHub Action. And then we'll discuss about how continuous integration automatically run, build and test using the deployment workflow. And finally, we'll set up a continuous delivery so that the automatically published to the production orchestrator using the production workflow. And then we'll also discuss about some of the additional steps like Slack notification. All right, that's a lot. So let's get started. So let's quickly look at what is the agenda for today. First thing that we're going to discuss is understanding the GitHub action, what GitHub action is all about. We'll talk about the core concepts that is used in GitHub action, right? We'll navigate through different settings that is required for creating a CI CD pipeline. We'll set up a GitHub action for our UI path, you know, uh, con orchestrator connectivity. We'll briefly discuss about GitHub branching and CI CD strategy, how you should, you know, use the multi branch setup for better security and better delivery of your pipelines. We'll set up GitHub repository for UiPath project. We'll store the credentials in a GitHub actions for the orchestrator, you know, client, orchestrator secrets and orchestrator URL and all those things. We'll discuss about the development workflow, which will build the package, publish the package test a package and it will create a pull request, right? So that's step number eight. And finally, at the end of this tutorial, we'll discuss how the production workflow can be triggered. All right, so let's quickly start with what is GitHub Action, right? GitHub Action is a continuous integration and continuous delivery platform that allow you to automate your build, test and deployment pipeline. GitHub Action is very similar to what we have in Microsoft Azure. It provides you Linux, Windows and Mac OS virtual machine to run your workflow. You should be able to host your self hosted runners in your data center or cloud infrastructure. In this example, we are going to use which is being provisioned by the GitHub. So we are not going to create any runner. We'll be using the one which is provided by the GitHub. Let's understand what are the core concepts used in a GitHub Actions. The core concept used in a GitHub Actions are the first one is a workflow. Then there are concept of called events. Then there is a concept of called jobs, steps and action. So we are going to look what is the workflow. So basically workflow is nothing but set of tasks that you need to perform to achieve the desired result, right? So workflow is a parent entity inside the workflow. We have jobs. Right. So jobs are made of multiple steps and workflow is made of multiple jobs. So workflow is a bigger entity inside the workflow. You have you have multiple jobs and jobs are made of similar or smaller steps, which runs on instance of a virtual environment. Job can be done independently of each other in a sequential each other or it can run sequential if there is a condition defined on the current batch. Right. For sake of simplicity or example, we do not want to publish the code into the orchestrator unless the test has been completed, right? So in those cases, we should be able to define a condition on a job, which is testing the bot. So that once that gets successful, then only the published job gets triggered, right? Inside the job, there are multiple steps, right? A job can contain multiple steps. Steps could be like, you know, checking out a code from GitHub repository, running a cell script command, running a power cell, power cell script command, 
calling the API, sending notification to Stack, you know, Slack channel, sending notification over the email, and lot many other things, right? These steps can be pre-built, right? Or you should be able to reuse the steps that you have already implemented. And at the lowest level or lowest unit of task is called action, right? So actions are single unit of work that you do in a, your workflow. You can create your own action or you can use the publicly shared action from the marketplace. That means lot of other developer has created the action so that you can use them directly into the workflow. So we'll quickly look at more detail on these terms when we go on GitHub action, uh, you know, while I'm showcasing you the demo, but let's understand it. For CI CD pipeline to be written, you need to define a workflow. That workflow has to be triggered on certain events like commit or, you know, opening or closing of a pull request or update of a project wiki, or maybe could be anything. You can also able to make it a scheduled, right? So workflow will be triggered on the basis of event. Inside that workflow, there will be jobs. There could be multiple jobs like, you know, uh, creating a nugget package, publishing a nugget package, testing a nugget packet, creating a assets, right? Deleting a assets, right? Sending notification to Slack. These are the jobs. Inside the, the job, there could be multiple steps, right? For building a package, you need to check out the code first, right? So checking out a code is a one step, right? And then after you need to run a power cell script or an API that will, that will build your source code into a nugget package. That's a step, right? And inside those steps, you could have a smaller set of actions. And I hope I am able to, you know, understand, I am able to explain you the core concept used in GitHub action. Let's quickly move to how we should, how and what all setup we need to do for the GitHub action so that we can run with UiPath project. All right. As I discussed in the previous slide, GitHub action uses workflow, right? And workflow uses eight another markup language, YAML syntax to define the workflow. Each workflow is stored as a separate YAML file in your code repository. Say for example, you are creating a project. Inside the project, what you need to do, you need to create a directory called GitHub. Inside the GitHub, there should be a directory called workflow. And there you need to create a tutorial, uh, sorry, workflow. For this tutorial, we'll be creating two workflow. One is a development workflow, another one is a production workflow. And the moment you commit the file, the moment you commit the workflow file, GitHub will automatically understand that you have defined the action to be completed by the GitHub, right? And how you should be able to access those, I'll explain you in the next slides, right? For sake of security, it's important not to hard code the secret inside the code base, right? It's not a good practice. The good way to avoid this is by using the environment variable. So we'll be storing the required password, URL, client ID, user key, account name, tenant name, all those environment specific variable into the GitHub repository, right? That's pretty easy, right? So let's quickly go to the GitHub action and see how we should be able to set up these few things before we go and discuss about the GitHub branching and CI CD strategy. All right, guys. So to setting up the environment variable, first thing that you need to do is you need to create a repo. So this is the our repository where we are going to use our GitHub action. Once you are in a repo, all you need to do is click on the settings. Okay. And inside the setting, you need to go on to the secrets, right? And then click on the actions. So here you should be able to see that you, are, you can define the secrets. I wanted to tell you here one more concept, right? You should be also able to use environment secret, right? Say for example, your workflow contains steps to be completed into different environment, right? Some steps needs to be completed into dev environment. Some steps needs to be completed into the production environment, right? Anything that you wanted to define for entire repository access, that means it can be accessed from entire repository. You can define them inside an action secret. And if you want something to be accessed only inside that particular environment, 
you should be able to define that using the environment variables. So all you need to do is you need to define an environment. So I have two environments here, dev and prd, right? Inside prd, what I have done is I have defined the variables which is of the production environment, right? So you can see I have defined UiPath account name, UiPath client ID, UiPath tenant name, and UiPath user key, right? And adding an environment variable is pretty simple. All you need to do is click on add secret, give the name, and give the value. And this value you can easily get from your, your UiPath admin console, right? Basically, it's very similar when you integrate UiPath API, right? So for UiPath API access, you need these values, right? So you should be able to get those value. If you don't know where you can find this, let me quickly showcase you how you should be able to find these values. So for that, what you need to do, you need to go to the admin. If you are using a cloud instance, go to the go to the tenant where you need to access. Say for example, I am using dev1 and here if you click on the API access, you should be able to see these values. So you need to copy these values and create an environment variable so that you should be able to perform the required action, right? So with this, you are all done with setting up the GitHub repository. Now, as I was discussing that for a project to be identified as a GitHub action, you need to define a workflow inside a GitHub folder and inside the workflow, you need to define your, you know, workflows. So I have used development.yml and production.yml. These are the two workflow that we are going to use in this tutorial. So we will look at in detail about how we have created this YML file. What are the steps included there? What are the actions we have used and how you should be able to build the dependencies and all those things. But before that, let's quickly discuss about the branching strategy or how we gonna, you know, configure our CI CD pipeline, right? So to discuss the branching strategy, let me quickly go back to the presentation where we are discussing about this, you know, security and client access keys, token storage. I'll go back to the PPT and there I'll explain you how you should be able to effectively manage multi-branch CI CD pipeline using GitHub action. All right, guys. So in this CI CD pipeline that we are going to build in next couple of minutes, let's discuss about what is the branching and CI CD pipeline strategy we are going to follow, right? At the extreme left, you can see the different branches, which is inside the UiPath Studio, that means your local branch. And then all the, you know, in the middle, you can see the branches, which are at remote location, that means on GitHub. And then you can see two prod pipe, two pipelines. One is a prod pipeline, which is consist of production actions that is defined inside the production.yml file. And then dev pipeline, which is dev development.yml, right? So let's discuss about how this branching strategy will work, right? So the branching strategy that we are following here is you are not directly allowed to commit any code into development and master. For any changes that you need to do, you need to check out a development branch, right? Say for example, you want to fix Excel issue. So you'll create a new feature branch from a development branch, perform whatever task you want to do on a feature branch. Once you are done with your changes, you need to perform git push so that those gets published into the feature branch. And from there, you need to create a pull request. Once you create a pull request, a reviewer may review your code or he'll perform the code review. And when everything is good, he can merge your pull request. And the moment merge request is pull, merge request is completed, on a development branch, dev pipeline will trigger, right? The moment you perform the pull request or pull request gets completed, development pipeline will get triggered and it will perform certain tasks like it will create first the nugget package from your source code and then it will publish your nugget package to the dev orchestrator and then it will 
run the test cases which is already created for your project right and once if all test cases are completed good then it will create a pull request another pull request to for code to be merged into the master so you don't have directly access to the master for any code has to be merged in a master branch it has to go through the pull request so that's the branching strategy follow that we are following so let me repeat this again so we have three branches one is a development branch which takes care of active development another one is a master branch which is a snapshot of a production copy anything that you need to do or perform changes you need to check out from the development branch create changes create a pull request so that it can be merged into develop and once it is merged in a develop or you perform a commit on develop branch dev pipeline will trigger and similarly once dev pipeline gets completed it will create a pull request pull request has to be reviewed by one reviewer and it should complete all the steps which is defined inside the development pipeline so that the pull request can be merged with the master branch so that's the branching strategy we are going to follow let's now go to the github portal and see how these are been defined so let's quickly look at how our github repository looks like so this is how our github repository will look like right inside our github repository we have multiple branches the one is a master branch that will contains the snapshot of a production then we have a develop branch which contains the snapshot of non prod environment and then if we need to perform any changes developer has to do a check out from the development branch perform fixes into the feature branch and once that is fixed a pull request has to be created from feature branch to development branch and from development branch a pull request has to be created to the master branch so that it can be you know completed the complete ci cd pipeline right let's quickly go and see how actions are defined so i'll discuss about the code later on but if you look at we have two workflow defined here one is a development workflow another is a, one is a production workflow and when you look at the development workflow okay so if you look at the development workflow here we are what we are doing here is we are running a you know cleaner that's basically cleans all the temporary file and everything then we trigger a job called build ui path nugget package then we have another job called publish ui path nugget package and then we test the nugget package file and once the test is completed we create a pull request and at the same time a notification has been sent on the slack channel so that's how the development workflow will look like let's quickly go back and look at how production workflow will look like production workflow is sim uh, you know is simpler than what we have in a development here we are not doing much thing here we are printing the details cleaning the environment and then publishing the nugget package to the prod orchestrator right but one thing you will notice that this is done on the basis of merge pull request so we are performing a pull request so once you know uh, changes are completed in a development branch a pull request will be automatically created like this and one reviewer has to perform a review and then only this change will be completed to the production branch all right so let's quickly go to the ui path studio and see the structure and organization of ui path project and then i'll explain you how you should be able to build this production and development workflow step by step